Hello, magandang hapon, magandang araw mga classmates. Muli welcome sa ating classroom. Today's video, we are going to talk about purposive behaviorism by Edward Thomas. Purposive behaviorism is one among the neo-behaviorism theories coined. So, if we say neo-behaviorism, it has aspects of behaviorism but it also reaches out to the cognitive perspective. So, there are two theories reflecting neo-behaviorism that stands out of all times, no? So, we have Albert Bandura's social learning theory, wherein we are going to discuss in the next video. And, of course, Edward Tolman's purposive behaviorism. Both theories are influenced by behaviorism, which is focused on external elements in learning. But their principles seem to also be reflective of the cognitive perspective or focus on more on internal elements. So, in this video, we are going to talk about the purposive behaviorism by Edward Tolman, one of the neo-behaviorism theories. Okay. So, the next video, as I have said a while back, will be Albert Bandura's social learning theory. So, what is purposive behaviorism? Purposive behaviorism has also been referred to as signed, sign learning theory. Okay? And it's often seen as the link between behaviorism and cognitive theory. Tolman's theory was founded on two psychological views those of the gestalt psychologist and those of john watson the behaviorist tolman believed that learning is a cognitive process okay he believes that learning is a cognitive process learning involves forming beliefs and obtaining knowledge about the environment and then revealing that knowledge through purposeful and goal-directed behavior so, it is also a psychological concept that suggests people go through life with the goal of satisfying their needs. So, people tend to go through life, magpatuloy sa buhay, with the goal of satisfying their needs. So, we do not only respond to the stimulus, but we act on beliefs and express attitudes. Okay. Another one, according to purposive behaviorism, behavior can be modified by experience and training. And learning is a cognitive process, I have said a while back. Uh, purposive behaviorism believes that learning is a cognitive process. We involve, learning involves forming beliefs and then we obtain knowledge, you no, know, about the environment and then revealing that knowledge through purposeful and gold, gold oriented behavior. Purposive behaviorists believe that any action made by an individual will be made to satisfy his needs and wants. So, sabi natin magkaiba ang needs at once, but in this uh, purposive behaviorism, all things that we do in action is to satisfy our needs and wants. So, it believes also that the effect on the environment can only be determined through specific actions with specific responses from those from these interactions okay another one tolman's form of behaviorism is stressed the relationship between stimuli rather than stimulus response connection or the classical conditioning so for tolman he disagreed with watson's behaviorism so he initiated that a new stimulus or a sign becomes associated with already meaningful stimuli or what you call the significance through a series of pairings. So, pinagsasama niya yung dalawang stimuli, no? yung dati tapos isang bago or a new stimulus is being associated with already meaningful stimuli. There was no need for a reinforcement according to Tolman to establish learning. So, for this reason, Tolman's theory was closer to the connectionism framework of Thorndike than the drive reduction theory of Hall or other behaviorists like, as I have said a while back, Watson and the like. So, 
iba iba yung pagtingin ni Tolman, okay? Or yung purposive behaviorism sa pagtingin ng ibang mga theories when it comes to what you call the stimuli response connection or Tolman believes that two stimulus or two stimuli can be associated together through what you call the series of pairings. And another belief of this purpose, purposive behaviorism, why it is differ from the other theories is that uh, there is no need for reinforcement to establish learning. That's according to this theory. Okay. We have some key concepts listed here, at least six, I guess six or seven. Let us talk about this concept one after the other. Okay, number one, learning is always purposive and goal-directed. So, we have two, two keywords here, purposive and goal-directed. So, Thoman asserted that learning is always purposive and goal-directed. So, he held the notion that an organism acted or responded for some adaptive purpose. He believed Individuals do more than merely respond to stimuli. They act on beliefs, attitudes, changing conditions, and they strive toward goals. So, hindi siya, ang paniniwala niya, hindi lang uh, puro, pu, merely, or hindi lang puro nagre-respond or nagre-react ang isang, ang isang individual sa stimuli. Kundi, they act on belief. Kasi nan, yung, ano ang paniniwala, Okay, yung behavior or yung attitude, changing condition, these are the factors wherein they strive toward their goals. Wherein, sabi rito na, Tolman saw behavior as holistic, purposive, and cognitive. So, hindi lang to limited in the reaction, reaction to a stimuli. Okay? But then it goes far or beyond and it acts on the beliefs, the attitudes, changing conditions, etc., etc. So, learning is always purposive and goal-directed. Meron siyang, meron siyang purpose at meron siyang, meron siyang, uh, tawag natin dito, meron siyang, iisang way, okay? Iisang, what do you call this one? Direction, kung saan patutungo yung learning na yun. I hope you got it. Next one, the cognitive maps in rats. So, a key concept of uh, Tolman here, organism will select the shortest and easiest path to achieve the goal. That is according to Tolman's key concept. Okay, so let us look into this. Oh, so in his most famous experiments, if you remember it, one group of rats was placed at random starting locations in a maze, but the food was always in the same location. Another group of rats, isang grupo naman ng rats, or the group B, had the food placed in different locations which always required exactly the same patterns of turns from their starting location. Okay. The group that had the food in the location performed much better than the other group, supposedly demonstrating that they had learned the location rather than the specific sequence of turns. So, this is a tendency to what they call learn location, signify that rats somehow form Cognitive maps, meron silang nabubuong isang cognitive maps that help them perform well on the maze. He also found that uh, organisms will select the shortest and easiest path to achieve the goal. So, iyan yung, yun yung ginawa niyang experiment nung inilagay niya yung mga map, yung mga uh, rats sa isang maze. Okay? And then, using food. Okay? The same, different patterns. And then, he concluded that organisms or the rats will select the shortest and easiest path to achieve the goal. Okay. Next one is what you call, um, wait, lo looking back, looking back in the cognitive maps of rats, uh, Tolman is also saying, uh, telling us that applied in human learning since a student passes by the same road going to school. Ito naman ay kung sa tao, ano. Uh, he acquires the cognitive map of the location of his school. So, when transportation rerouting is done, he can still figure out what turns to make to get to his school the shortest or easiest way. So, kumbaga parang, na-condition yung mind nung bata na ito yung daan. So, halimbawa, nagkaroon ng rerouting, alam na alam pa rin niya kung saan yung daan na pinakamalapit. 
para makarating siya sa school. So, ganun din yung nangyari. Napatunayan nito yung mga nangyari sa experiment sa group A and B ng mga daga doon sa maze. Okay. So, another key concept is the latent learning. So, latent learning is a kind of learning that remains or stays with the individual until needed. So, it is learning that is not outwardly manifested all at once, no? Um, according to Tolman, it can exist even without reinforcement. Ito yung sinasabi niya kanina na learning can exist even without reinforcement. It is not needed, no? He demonstrated this in a rat experiments wherein rats apparently learned the maze, no? By forming cognitive maps of the maze, but manifested this knowledge of the maze only when they needed to. Okay, so, applied to human learning, uh, this concept, according to Tolman, a two-year-old always sees her dad operate the TV remote control and observes how the TV is turned on or how channel is changed and volume adjusted. Okay, a two-year-old baby, no? After some time, the parents are surprised that on the first time that their daughter holds the remote control, she already knows which buttons to press. For what function, okay? Through latent learning, the child knew the skills beforehand even though she has never done them before. Parang yung mga bata ngayon na, kumbaga parang 2 years old, they do not know how to read. They do not know how to, yeah, understand what they are seeing on on the, on the screen, like of the, of the tablet. But they know how to operate and they know how to go to their own games. They know how to perform the games, no? Even though they don't understand what are they reading, no? But the skills is there. Okay, that is what we call Latin learning. Another key concept is that the concept of intervening variable. So, intervening, intervening variables are variables that are not readily seen but serve as determinants of behavior. So, Tolman believed that learning is mediated or is influenced by expectations, perceptions, representations, needs, and other internal or environmental variables. So, example here is, in his experiment with rats, he found out that hunger was an intervening variable. Yeah. So, there are other factors for us to to learn. No? There are that pushes us no to learn so uh, or do something no it's not only it's not only concentrated on one it's not only concentrated on one the reward or punishment okay or yeah the reward and punishments like what uh, the other the other series are saying no so in this, in this part, uh, Tolman argues or believes that there are other factors no, that are being, being mediated no, or influenced, that are, being, that are influenced to the learning. So, in here, we have external, external expectations, perceptions, no, the needs, internal or environment variables. So, sabi nga niya dito, doon sa kanyang experiment, dahil nagugutom na yung rats, kahit na, sigu, uh, kahit na mahirap yung maze, ay nakukuha niyang mahanap yung pinakamadaling daan kasi nga nagugutom na siya. So, the intervening variable here is very important to push you into learning or doing something good or doing something in your life. no Okay. Last of Tolman's key concept is that Reinforcement is not essential for learning. So this is the what he argues, no, that we don't need reinforcement for learning. So Tolman concluded that reinforcement is not essential for learning, although this reinforcement provides an incentive for performance. Like if you achieve something, there is reinforcement, there is reward, no? So in these studies, he observed that the rat in his experiment, he observed that the rat was able to acquire knowledge of the way through me through a maze. Example, to develop a cognitive map even in the absence of reinforcement. So even there is no there is no reinforcement, the rat have found its way out of the maze through developing what you call a cognitive map. So according to Tolman, it's not necessary that 
we need reinforcement for learning. Okay? So, those are the concepts being presented to us by Tolman in his purposive behaviorism. Once again, thank you so much for dropping by. Laging tandaan na sa ating classroom, lahat tayo ay matututo, kahit tayo ay magkakalayo. Hanggang sa susunod.